So when I say inform the prompt, this is what I mean. This is a very basic example of how you can inform a prompt before you make your first draft. I've just grabbed 10 keywords from Google auto suggest and using that as an example. First thing I've done is generate some titles from it. The second thing I've done is ask the sheet to give me some semantically related keywords, some SEO keywords. Um, it's, it's continued on from the main keywords, so it's got these commas in the beginning, but it's not gonna be a problem. I'd usually use those as tags in the post. I have this prompt data cell, and what it does is it just organizes this, this data in a concatenate formula. So we've got the blog title, and it grabs from the title field. We've got the main keyword, grabs from the, the main keyword cell. Then we've got the additional keywords and it grabs from there. And I've got meta description and SEO blog outline. So the next thing I'm gonna do is of course, I'm gonna get it to generate a meta description. And then I'm going to ask it to use the meta description to create an SEO outline. And then that's all gonna go into this prompt data cell because it's all been concatenated and it's all waiting for these cells to be filled. And then when we create our first draft, it's gonna read from this cell, it's going to know what the title is, it's gonna know from the meta description what it's about, the additional keywords, and then it's got the SEO blog outline. So before you make the first draft, you can, you've can you got the chance to look over the outline to ensure it doesn't have anything like what are headphones <laughs> or, you know, those headings that it likes to put in. AI is notorious for doing things like that. Sometimes my prompts make sure it doesn't do that. Other times it still does it. So now I generate, I use the meta description to generate an outline first and then I generate the first draft from the prompt data cell. And again, this is very basic, but you can put whatever you like in the cell, keeping in mind the character limit. So OpenAI has a token limit and that's the total. So it's not just the output. If you're hoping to create a really long blog post, you have to take into consideration the prompt. So the tokens used for the prompt itself, if you've got a very long detailed prompt, and then things like this, the prompt data, so the cell it's drawing from, and then the final output. So if you are getting shorter articles and you're telling it how long you want them to be, please keep in mind it, you're giving it data from three different places essentially, or two different places, and then it's creating that in a third with all of those tokens. So I'm just gonna go and get the prompts for meta description and SEO blog outline, and then I'm going to generate my first drafts. Let's see what it does from the meta description. So we're gonna go both of these. We've got our meta description and we've got our outline. So let's drag and click and drag, click and drag. And as you can see, it's gonna update the prompt data cells. Oh, don't do those together because this is pulling from here. So. I may have wasted credits because it's tried to pull from something that was still loading. So never do that. Let it do this one first and then that one if if the next row is dependent. This is not a GPT-3 formula. The prompt data cell is just uh, a Google Sheets formula. It's just concatenate, so it has no issues. But when you're doing multiple GPT-3 formulas, let them, don't do them all together. We've, we've, um, We've gone over this before, it's just it's, uh, it's just bad. So, um, okay, so we've got our meta descriptions. This looks like something's wrong here. So we're gonna save these as text, I think. And it, the good thing is it doesn't matter, the SEO blog doesn't matter. Before we had another formula to stop it from putting numbers in the beginning and doing all kinds of weird stuff. But because all we're doing is using the outline here, to inform the prompt, so go into this prompt data cell, it's just advising the, the next prompt that this is the outline we want to follow. So we're not separating it, we don't have to separate it. So we don't really have to organize that data. Now we have 
our prompt data cells filled in and all of our information is there. But now this is a healthy amount of information we're going to give it to make our first draft. Before I tried making first drafts with just the title, then I started going deeper into it, started including the keyword. What we were trying to do before was trying to select multiple cells. So to put the GPT-3 custom and then select multiple cells, and that would sometimes work, but most of the time it would give you errors. It didn't really know what to do with the information. So it makes sense to use the concatenate to tell it what all the bits of information are. So to put these strings of text together so it knows what to do with it. And then the prompt is going to be giving it more instruction on what it should be doing, the tone it should be writing in, very important because this information is dynamic, the prompt is not. So you want the prompt to be generic, but also more about the structure and the tone of the writing. Whereas the prompt data is going to be very specific to the output that you want it to give you. It's generating the first draft. It's got a lot of information to look at. It could give me an error or it could give me a really good blog post. Error. Yep. Give me an error. So errors happen and you just have to go again. In fact, sometimes instead of waiting around for the error, I'll go and do some other ones. So the reason we get errors is it times out after, as you can see there, it says exceeded maximum execution time. So there is a, a time limit on how long it has to render the prompt before it just says, okay, we obviously can't do it. So the more complex the prompt and the, the thing is that it's trying to do, the longer the article, um, it's, it's more than likely going to give you an error and you do have to, unfortunately, just keep generating until you get it. That is the downside of informing the prompt um, and asking for too much detail. But I'm going to try and generate the rest of these. So if we want to expand on these, what I've been doing, I know there's an easier way. There's always an easier way, but that's the beauty of learning. You just keep learning. So what I've been doing to expand on these is using a, a separator from WordPress. And let me show you. All right, so I've got my spacer. All I'm going to do is find and replace. And I'm going to find H2. Then I'm going to replace it with spacer H2. Simple stuff. Replace all, done. So now I have my spaces at the beginning or in between each heading, which is what I do anyway. So you can use anything, of course, you can use anything because all you're doing is giving it something to identify where to split. So you can use anything, but keep in mind it's, it's gonna have them in the cells. So make sure it's something that you can delete after. Now we're going to split them. Do I have my spacer in my clipboard? I do. Okay, so data, split text to columns. It automatically does its own thing, but we're going to go to custom, paste the spacer in, and it's done that. It also looks like it cleared the spacer, which is actually a good thing because you can, you can put anything in as long as you have a marker of where you want it to split already because I wouldn't want it to split based on H2 because then it would take those away. So you can put any marker you like. It's going to detect it and then split by it and then I guess it discards it after. I do have some H3s here as well though. So my formatting is messed up on that. But the good thing is all we're going to be doing now is expanding on these individual headers. So you don't have to rely on the first draft to create the whole article, especially if it's giving you back an, an entire article and it's only 600 words long and you want to go into more depth, you're definitely going to want to split it up and then get another prompt to expand on that. And you can tell the, the additional prompt to write three paragraphs. So to take the information that is generated and then write 
three paragraphs on it, around it. But what you don't want it to do is continue on from it. So you have to be very, very clear in your prompt that you want it to rephrase, rewrite and expand um, or yeah, rephrase, rewrite in X amount of paragraphs. And then you should get a better output that way. I'm just going to do one to show you. I've got my rephrase and rewrite prompt. I'm going to put that in here and grab this, get it to read from and rewrite. I'm going to drag that down as well. Should have no errors, no issues. Of there we go. Play. So as you can see, if you do this for each of your headings that you've split, you've got a lot to go by. And it also starts to break these down further, as you can see. It's actually started listing, so it's done strong. Um, you could change these to H3s if you like, but it's started going into more depth underneath the H2.